a scale of military activities in the Gaza Strip, Antonio Guterres reiterated that the number of civilians killed is quote unquote unparalleled. Now, without entering into uh, discussing the accuracy of the numbers that were published by uh, the uh, de facto authorities uh, in Gaza, what is clear is that we have had in a few weeks thousands of children killed. So this is what matters. We are witnessing a killing of civilians that is unparalleled and unprecedented in any conflict since I am Secretary General. We'll start with the top developments coming in from the Israel Hamas war. After days of fighting, the United States has signaled that a deal on hostage release is now getting closer. However, it acknowledges that there is still a lot to be done in this regard. I know this is of great interest to all of you. Um, uh, I just want to let you know we're still working this hour by hour. I do not have an update for you on the hostage uh, uh, deal that we're trying to negotiate. Uh, but as you heard the Deputy National Security Advisor say yesterday, uh, we believe we're closer than we've ever been. So we're hopeful. Uh, but, uh, but there's still work to be done, um, uh, and nothing is done until it's all done. So uh, we're, we're going to keep working on this. Fighting continues amid the diplomatic efforts. Explosions continue to pound Gaza, and many have been allegedly killed, including children, during a strike in southern Gaza's Khan Yunis city, while homes have also been destroyed. Israeli strikes have also hit Rafah in southern Gaza and visuals on your screens show the devastation in the aftermath of the attack. Meanwhile, a field hospital sent by Jordan has entered Gaza, and this is the first field hospital to enter the enclave amid the war. And the field hospital has a 41-bed capacity as per Jordanian officials and is accompanied by over 180 personnel and 40 trucks of medical aid. 100 patients have been evacuated from Gaza's Indonesian hospital as per Hamas, and Hamas also says that the evacuation took place with the help of Red Cross just hours after it was hit by a deadly Israeli strike. 28 premature babies were also evacuated from the Indonesian hospital and have now arrived in Egypt as per Hamas. On the other hand, the Israeli army has released a video showing its soldiers assisting in the evacuation of premature babies from the Al-Shifa hospital to Egypt. As per the World Health Organization, primary health care situation in Gaza is catastrophic and is now on the brink of complete collapse. We are seeing a complete collapse of the of the higher level infrastructure of the Gazan health system. It is just the most basic of needs that can be met now. And remember, there has been no water, no electricity, almost no fuel um, uh, provided for those, and, and, and very limited medical supplies going in. These hospitals have not had access to the basic things they need to provide healthcare services. Meanwhile, Israel's South first responders have released a security camera footage from October 7th and the footage shows Hamas gunmen chasing people from an outdoor music festival with one scene executing a woman at point-blank range and the woman has not been identified yet.
The fighting also continue on other fronts. The Israeli army released images of what it says shows Israeli fighter jets strikes on Hezbollah operational command centers and infrastructure. Now this, it says, in response to rocket launches from Lebanon into Israel. Yemen's Houthis have released a video footage showing armed men dropping from a helicopter and seizing a cargo ship in the southern Red Sea. And the video has been released a day after the ship was hijacked by the Iran-backed group who said that the ship was linked to Israel. Israel, however, says that the seized ship was British-owned and Japanese-operated. And in other updates, Israel's foreign ministry has said that it has recalled its ambassador from South Africa. Israel says that the decision has been taken following the latest South African statements and the envoy has been recalled for consultations. And earlier on Monday, a South African government minister called on the International Criminal Court to issue an arrest warrant for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, this contention comes ahead of an extraordinary BRICS summit on Gaza which is set to be hosted by South Africa on Tuesday. Leaders from the new members, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Iran and the United Arab Emirates will also attend the meeting. There is no end in sight to the Israeli onslaught in Gaza, though the Qatari Prime Minister has said a deal between Israel and Hamas on return of hostages is close to fruition. Qatari Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani has said his confidence is growing and that a deal will be reached soon. Sheikh Mohammed said the challenges facing the agreement are just practical and logistical. Going through uh, uh, ups and downs from time to time uh, throughout the last uh, few weeks. But uh, I think that, uh, you know, I'm now more confident that we are close enough to reach to uh, a deal that can bring the people uh, uh, safely back to their homes, whether they are the hostages on uh, Hamas side or whatever the exchange uh, uh, that will happen will take place from the Israeli side. This even as a member of Israel's war cabinet, Benny Gantz, said his priority is to get the hostages back. He added that Israel has decades if needed to destroy Hamas, but the country does not have that much time to return the abducted people back home. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the White House rejected a Washington Post report which claimed Israel, the United States and Hamas had reached an agreement to release the hostages. It said 